very slowly and toss out that sand. Let's see how that tastes now. Now that can be served hot, but it was usually served always. That's nice hot. Cold at the pavilion. Mm. It is mm. nice hot. Huh? Mm. So very I have good. one which is cold, and I think we should have a bit of chives in it. So this is a very rich soup, of course, and you would not serve much more than about four ounces, you know? Yeah. Because this is quite rich and delicious. Mm. That's very and pretty. Elegant, you know? Yes. Oh, just taste that. Exactly. It's a different mm. taste than when it's hot, yeah? It's very nice, isn't yes. it? Yes. So we'll sort put it a, here. A more elegant version of a Vichy swallow. Yes, very elegant version. So now, out of this, this is the part where you would want to remove, of course, all of those, because we only use the juice for the Billy Billy. Look at the mm -hmm. size of those, you know? They are those beautiful. Are beautiful. But do you want to use some of those directly on the plate? Or are we going to put them back into the shell with a ravigat sauce? What do you think? Oh, so we could do that. Mm -hmm. But at that point, we keep half a dozen of nice shell like yeah. this. Let's put a little lettuce on yes. them, don't you think? Just to make a bed for them. OK. Then I think when we make the sauce, put a little sauce in each one and then the mussel on top, would you say? Yeah, OK, so we can arrange that here. And yeah. then we'll put the sauce after in it whenever We'll make the ravigot in here. It's actually beautiful. We need so a bit of chopped shallots in there. So what do you want in there? Chopped we need shallots? Some chopped shallots. Okay. And a bit of mustard. So I'll let you. You put make the you stuff. do the shallot, don't okay. put a little mustard in. And then we Maybe want yet. a bit of hard boiled egg. Oh here it is. I think we have some. Well, that's a nicely hard-boiled egg, isn't you want, it? You want a knife? You want that knife? Okay. okay so shallot. You have uh, mustard there. Shallots. I do. Yes. Pepper. I'm putting black pepper. Pickle. Let's have a little pickle. I think that's delicious. Yeah. I love the pickle. Those are not the sweet pickle, by the way. Those would be like your gherkin. Here we are. Here. So this is a kind of sauce that you can use with a poach fish. It's great. You can use that with our mussel here. You can do a salad with it. Some parsley in there. Oh, that that's would work very well nice. With it. Yes. You what want else? No, do what you type think? of oil do you want in there? Some excellent olive oil. Okay. Because I like this is a very light olive oil. Yes. How about some vinegar? Yes. A bit of fresh lemon. A little. Here we have the lemon. And this is white wine vinegar, right? Mm hmm. How was that? Pretty good? Yeah. That'd be good. That'd be good, yeah. I'll give you back your. Mm hmm. What's that if you want to put? I'll, I'll put a little bit. So you put some in there, and I'll put one mm -hmm. mussel in each? Mm hmm. Okay. If they are small, you can put several mussel in mm -hmm. them. Shall we put some on top, too? Yes. And back on top. Good. And this, this is, is very nice. And with mussel, of course, you need a nice, a nice white wine. A nice white wine. And you know what you need too? French right. bread. Yeah. To, to dip it in the in the juice, you know. So that's Just what we're going to do. Tear it apart. You think? We're going to tear it apart. We're going to eat our mussel. We're going to drink our our wine, and we're going to toast you. Say, bon appétit! And happy cooking! Good to be cooking with you, Jack! It sure is! Okay! Presentation of KQED San Francisco.
It's a beautiful color, Jack, and the skin looks crisp, but not too much, so. Yes, and it smells real good, just out of the oven. And I notice, as you're carving the white meat, that it all stays together. Yes, yes, you know, when the chicken has been frozen, sometimes it tends to break apart, but this was a nice, fresh chicken. Mmm, but look, and it smells so delicious. Mmm, I agree with you. Tender and perfect. Yes. Mmm. I can't wait to eat it. A well-roasted chicken is the sign of a really fine cook. Even among professionals. That's true. Yeah, tasty. That looks awfully good. We're going to show you how to do it today. Oh, good. Happy cooking. Bon appétit. We're going to do whole chicken today. We're going to do one whole roast chicken two ways, and then we're going to do another one that's butterfly. And Jack, I'm Jack has yeah. prepare a little stuffing. I'm doing I'm a little stuffing just under the skin. So I'm very simple. I'm putting some shallots here. Do you want to help me cut some shallots? Sure. And uh, some herbs. So just to stuff it under the skin. And of course, you don't have to do that. On the other hand, you can vary it. You can have chopped mushroom. It flavors the meat, you know? Yeah. It's a bit more elegant. I think that'd be plenty here. I have about a good half a cup of shallots. We are going to put some savory with it. It's part of the herb de Provence, the savory, you know? It has and a I very like... arom aromatic Yes, I'm going to put... You don't want too much, do well, you? About a tablespoon of the fresh one. Then I'll add some parsley. You know, I have the flat parsley here. The flat has a little more flavor, but it's not as pretty as for the decoration, it's is it? It's different, yes. I mean, yeah. some swear by one or the other. Are you going to stuff yours with anything? Well, I'm going to have put mine a little lemon in it. On the whole, it's going to be rather pristine. Oh, good. So I put a little bit of uh, ground pepper in it, a dash of salt. I don't really want to cook it long, you know, frankly. I just want to soften the, the shallot, you know, so I that think I can... Notice the way he has the handle of the frying pan. He's jerking it. He's not doing this, he's jerking it, and it turns well, over Well, there is a sway there, so there is a kind yeah. of elliptical motion, you know, with this, with this. And that's about it. I'm going to put it on that plate here so that it cool off a little bit so I can stuff my chicken with it, other flavoring. So I let it cool off, and while this is cooling off... I'll do my chicken. We're going to work on your chicken, good. I'm going to make one very simple, and I, we have to remember Salmonella, etc. So what, when you're going to prepare any kind of raw chicken, you want to be sure it's on a surface that you're going to thoroughly wash with soap and water when you're through. You have to make sure that all of your instruments you're going to wash also. Yes. And I will also wash this chicken. I have washed it with hot water. And if you if we take in, I don't the, wash my chicken. And he doesn't wash his. I think in France, they're not as worried about things as we are, are they? Well, I live in Connecticut, pretty far from France. Well, that's you know. right. <laughs> but what happened is that <clears throat> I feel it's going to go in a four, 425 degree oven plate. for like an hour or so. And at that point, if the bacteria are still living, they deserve to live, you know? I'm taking out the wishbone. The wishbone, OK. So that it makes the breast easier to carve. If you have any children who like wishbones, too bad for them, uh -huh. I guess, or take more time getting it out. I think it makes the breast much easier to curve. Uh -huh. That's it. Good. So those chickens are about <clears throat> close to four pounds, huh? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. You want to leave oh. the fat in it or take it out? I'll take it out. 
When you stuff your chicken, you could use some of that the, under the skin, couldn't the, you? The two lump of fat like this. Well, sometimes I use it in pate, you know? I want to put a little salt and pepper in mine. And I've got some fresh sage. I'm going to put that in. Good. And a bit of lemon. The idea of lemon, I think that came to me through Marcella Hazan, the Italian cook. Uh huh. She put lemon she in put it. She puts lemon in it. I'll cut some slice for you if you want. That'll be fine. I'm going to squeeze it a little bit. And you put that inside? I'm just going to put that inside. Then I'm going to get these nubbins off. That the Wing, classic wings way? Wings akimbo. That's it. That goes underneath there. And then I'm going to give it a butter massage. Oh, oh. This is very good for it. It makes it feel... Very, very good for the skin. It makes it feel as though you're really paying attention to it. <laughs> And you are Comforting. paying real attention to it. Good. And now a little salt all over it. Then I just want to tie you those to legs the together. It? Yeah, that's it, just like this, that's it. Yeah, as long as it'll really hold. That's it. I have a rack here. These, are, I think, are available in most places, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, those are nice because it gives you a nice uh, heat transfer of heat from the side to all over, mm -hmm. so it's brown on each side. That's a nice way of kind well, of self-basting. And then itself. another thing is I'm going to put this in, shallow pan. With this kind of thing, because it's not going to turn, I don't think you want to lose high sides like that, because the bottom and the sides won't brown. Yes, that's a good point. And that's just going to go and sit in the roasting pan. Oh. Jack, I forgot I'm going to put a little bit of Lemon juice on Oh, there. lemon juice on top of it, good. I think that helps it brown, too. Mm -hmm. I still have my chicken to do, right? Here we are, and it's about the same weight. I'm removing the fat also. And I also going to remove the wishbone, that triangular piece right here. Sometimes the skin of the neck is too much. And that triangle here, I'm doing just as you did, cutting on one side, cutting on the other side, then after prying it out, you know. This one is broken. I can, I can feel it now, it's broken right in the center. I have one piece on this side, one piece on the other side, and you have to be careful because when it's broken like that, the end is pointed. You know, the end is very pointed and you can puncture your finger. If it's not broken, if it's a try, you can pry it out like that and down. But again, here it really helped in the carving. On mine here, I'm going to cut the wing. So here, I want to bring this together, and for me, I'm going to stuff it a little bit under the skin. One of the best way, maybe, is to get a bowl, something like that, that I can sit the chicken in, so that I can actually, underneath here, you know, put my stuffing, mostly under the breast. First, what I should have done, it's really run my finger here. It's, and that, it's very easy to do, isn't yeah. it? Because it just works that way. It just work. Uh, get it loose like that. There is a little bit of fiber. But as you can see, I can really put my hand all around the breast. It's and that so funny seeing the hand yes. go right through there, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. We put it there this way. And now I can stuff it in there with this. You're going to keep it open for me like that? I will. So I actually just... And that will be between the skin and the flesh. That's between the skin and the flesh. It yeah. smells good. The shallot is so nice with it. If I cook a chicken often at home, I may not do it. If I have a guest coming, then you want to make it a bit fancier. And uh, that's one way of doing it and make it a little bit different. OK. Not too messy this way. And I get it out again, bring the skin on the back, you know, so that to keep that stuffing in and kind of massage the stuffing a little bit, you know, bring it down on the breast like this. Bring my leg together. And I like when I truss it to start this way, you know. Start backwards. Yes. It's a nice way of trussing it. No, and the trussing is really... In this in this truss, you can turn the chicken. You don't need 
to worry about right. the truss coming off. So and what you don't want, there carefully. is many trussing where they put the, the string on top of the breast. It should not be on top of the breast. So I go underneath. I bring the leg here. Now, all you go underneath, you do this. So you cross it above, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go under the um, drumstick to um, do like an really eight. Holds an, an eight it, yes. And then you can close it. That's very and then good. you bring it around and just attach it. In that case here, what happened? I cut the wing, remember? Otherwise, I can oh, anchor yes. it behind the wing, but there I anchor it behind the neck because oh, I, I removed the wing. That's what you need, isn't it? Yes. An anchor. And like that, 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 that keep the skin together also there. You know? That's wonderful. So, those are the secret, I think, of having those anchor places yeah. there and there. So at that point, you see, it is nice because uh, the breast is up and uh, it's secure in place. I can mm -hmm. move it around. So Une belle I, poitrine. Une belle poitrine. So I'm going to put a bit of salt for me here, there. And that's it. I don't put anything else on top. Go on. I know you, oh, since I'm putting it directly on the tray, I may put like a half a teaspoon of butter just there because I want to start it on the side, you know? Brown it on the side, turn it on the other side, and eventually finish on the back. Mm. OK, so let's put it in okay. the oven. Good. And that should cook about 425 degrees for like 15 minutes. Then we reduce the heat. And then finish it off at 350, and it'll take, because my chicken was almost four pounds. That'll take almost two hours. Yes. And with two chickens in the oven, that yes. takes even a little bit longer. So shall we start on the other chicken? All right. OK. So here we're going to do a larger chicken, even. I mean, this is a This a roaster, is a four, right? almost a five pounder. This is, uh, yeah, I think it's like five and a half pound, actually. You know, and so what we're pretty... going to do this, we're going to butterfly it and broil roast it, because this would take about two and a half hours roasted. And if you butterfly, it takes half the time. Yes. So first you're going to take out the backbone. Yes, I'm, I'm going to take the wishbone also yeah. on that one. Yeah. And I'll see if this one is, is broken. See, I can on each side. No, it's not broken, so I can really pry out with my thumb and then put my thumb in the back of it and break it off. And you have the whole thing. Yeah. Good. See, this is that piece here, which is actually, as I say, really in the way when you carve. So we're going to remove, I remove the end of it here. All that we keep for our stock, of course, which is good. And uh, I'm going to cut also the end of the drumstick here. So this way. Is that for better presentation? Yes, it has, I think, a better presentation this way. What happened here, the chicken will shrink a little bit, you know, as it cooked and oh. make like a little ham. Mm -hmm. And what we want to remove now is the strip of bone in the back. So. So that will give you plenty of room to make a nice sauce. Yes. And with a big, heavy knife, you can have your supermarket do this for you. They can just take the bone out with their big buzz saw. Exactly, yes. Or you can use... But it's useful to learn how to do it yourself, sure. I think. And cutting it very close to the bones, you don't lose any yeah, meat. Yeah, you don't lose. And there you use for stock anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, at that point here, we cut it a little bit the bone here so we can spread it out good. Another That's a good idea, cutting it that way. Yeah, and another thing I like to do here, you see the leg here? Mm -hmm. I want to cut. You can see here, this is the drum. You know, the drumstick and the thigh. This is the place where it never really get cooked enough, so I cut it up and That's a little a good bit idea. here. Yes. Just in the joint here, a little bit mm -hmm. like this, so the heat start there. That's you know? a good idea. And I do actually the same thing here, cutting a little bit of the joint here and of the joint. And it makes carving here. easier, too. Yes. That's a very good idea. So what we do now, pre-cook it a little bit, right? Well, what I like to do is to season and butter that and brown this side uh -huh. under the broiler. And then, and then the turn it over and finish it roasting. Okay, so, so a we, broiled roast. We did exactly that because I knew you wanted to do that. So we have one which said 10 minutes under the broiler Good. this way. Well, are you going to put a spice rub and on? And then it? I'm going to do a spice rub on Afterwards. top. Afterwards. Yes. Oh, I see. Yes. Now we have one that's already browned. So this is exactly the same. 
it has been 10 minutes under the broiler, so it's basically a raw, but... It's just... Because it's going to roast on the other side, on yes. the steam side. And I like to use one of those little uh, coffee grinder, you know, mm -hmm. a spice grinder. This is mustard seed, you know. Mustard seed, I'm putting a little bit of caraway seed, some herbe de Provence. That dry herb mixture, does that yes. have rosemary and thyme? Exactly. And a bit of paprika. A little dash of cayenne, that's it. This is black pepper. And I'll put my salt in there as well. Put all the seasoning that I need. Mm. And this is great. I mean, that little machine does the whole thing in seconds, you know? So we have to I'm sprinkle. I'm going to move away all that crap right here. Yeah, the cayenne, mm. you know? Yeah. So we put a little bit on this side. Ooh, I can feel it too. Then, as you can see, it's still raw, you know? You can, of course, do it without any of the seasoning, yeah? And now it's going to go in the oven. I put the butterfly chicken in the other oven. Now I'm going to check the first one. Look at that here. As you can see, oh, yours is beautiful. Now mine here has brown on one side, and as you can see, you know, it's beautifully brown. And with the stuffing here, now I put it on the other side. I like to cook it on one side, the other side, and only the 10 minutes on the back, you know, so that the, the juice stay in the breath. And now, of course, it was at 425. I'm going to reduce the temperature to about 350, 375. Now, to look at these two, this is the one that really wasn't trussed at all. The legs have come apart and uh -huh. not. It doesn't look very elegant. No, I think it looks good. You see, yes. if I press in it like that, I don't know if the camera can, and if you press and you see the juice, then it should be show, nice and clear. We want to show how do we know that the chicken is done. Yes, when it's nice and clear this way, or also even when you pour the juice out of it and the juice is clear, if, you don't if, have any blood in it. Yes, if it's rosy, it just isn't done. Uh, it needs a little more, And yes. also, I think you feel the leg. Yes, the leg here. <coughs> well, I'm, first, I'm going to remove this one here, mm -hmm. to remove that rack. Then if you sit it in a plate and there's some rosy juices that fall in the plate, it's definitely not quite done. Uh -huh. So you're going to carve that one. Yes, so what I'm going to do is to put this one there and maybe start to carve it and start the juice. And we have this we lovely have juice going to make here. a great sauce. What we want to do to start with is to remove as much fat as we can from the top here, just to keep the clear fat and keep just the natural juice underneath. I know when I was an apprentice and even at home, in France we use the chicken fat to saute potato or other type of thing, the clear well, fat like that. Well, sensible people really... here do the same thing. Yeah. It's not only the French who are talking. I know. See, that's right. See I do that now. <laughs> now here, the beautiful crystallization of the juice, which is a glass here. You want to deglay that with a bit of vermouth? I think oh, very uh -huh. often white, white wine is a little, it's a little acid. We can put uh -huh. in more if we want. You want a bit of chicken stock too? So we put a tiny bit of that in. And all these brown bits, that's where the wonderful flavor is. But we want to, to have all of that melting, right? Yes, and I think we'll put in a little bit of shallot, shallot too. So while this is cooking, you look at that. Shall I carve the chicken during that time? Yes, let's. OK. First, don't forget to remove the, the string. And in that case here. No, then okay, I think that's way. a definite indication that there's no pink in there. Yes. And this, at that point yeah, here, I will way. probably cut. There is a joint here. I cut in the joint, cut a piece of the breast, and lift up that piece of the breast directly off here. And there's a warm platter. Good. This side. Again, you cut the breast and break it open at the joint and pull it. Remove it. I can see now, you can see here all of the stuffing that I add in my chicken. I will again cut at the joint to remove the other breast, or part of the breast. Here it is. And then now we have the whole front here. I actually love the bone, you know, if I have a choice, I'll eat the bone. 
you know, with a salad. What I want to do here is to take the brochet that is the white, all the white part out of it. I just hold it with my knife and pull it out. That's also an indication if the chicken is really good, it's going to slide out of here. OK, and then you can pull this out. Basically, all you have here is your carcass, you know? What we are going to do is to serve that roast chicken and maybe we'll arrange the salad. We have some beautiful lettuce leaf here. Now, Jack, I'm going to show you the juices. The juice, we have beautiful juice here. And we want to do a little bit of vinaigrette, you know? I use, and I want to use a little bit of the fat of the chicken with the vinaigrette. So here we are, just plain beautiful Boston lettuce for the vinaigrette, the garlic, salt, pepper, you know? What do you I have a little bit of, you want to give me a little bit of vinegar? There's a little vinegar. OK, this is a red wine vinegar. A little bit of mustard. And I put the fat, you know, that I have from the chicken again from the top. A little bit of that and a little bit of the olive oil. That brings all those tastes together, you know? Well, that would be very nice. I think putting a little of the meat juice in is a very good yeah, idea. Yeah, and we sprinkle some of the juice on top, mm -hmm. you know? So. The two breasts. Yes, that looks very nice. And the large breast extra there. You could serve six people with this. You could serve six people with that on a large chicken like this one. Four, yes. I would frankly finish outside on my salad. Mm -hmm. I, sh I should have maybe put it before I put my chicken no, on top. No, they like it that way. I think that's very nice. And certainly, a little bit of that juice sprinkled mm. on top, and I would, I mean, look at dark and beautiful juice. Do you think it's eatable? I, I would think, think so. I can eat all of it right now. OK. And now we have that other one here. And shall I cut I'll that put one? All that in there. This one is darker, yes. you know, in color. It's really a large chicken. I mean, look at the size that of that chicken. It's very thick. So you can mm. probably carve, you know, pieces of breast like this. I have really large pieces of breast because this is the mother of all chicken, right? I would probably cut also that thigh in two because it is pretty large, you know? That chicken would serve easy eight people, you Oh, know, at I least, think. okay, eight, ten. So maybe I'll Just try put it all on. That's a good idea, yeah. Here like this. We are going to serve some watercress with that, right? Would go very mm -hmm. well with it. You have a bunch of watercress. I love the watercress also when you have some of the juice on top of it. Mm. And I really think just the natural juices enhanced a little bit the way oh, yes. you did it. They're just delicious because it's pure chicken. And when you've got a lovely chicken like this, I don't really like it mucked up with a lot of sauce and stuff. But that makes for perfect roast chicken, and I think it, it's not difficult if you just pay attention to it and make sure that you get a good chicken and make sure that you haven't over or undercooked it and then carve it with style. Yes. I think we shall say bon appetit. And happy cooking. Presentation of KQED, San Francisco. Today we're going to do souffles. And as everyone knows, the heart of the good souffle is... Egg white, beaten egg white. And I'm going to do mine in copper. I beat it faster than the machine. Well, we're going to see if you're faster than the machine. All right. Joe. OK. Wow. One, yes. two, three, go! <laughs>
Happy Cooking. Bon Appetit. between the man and the machine. We both did, yeah. except I thought mine were better. Yeah, mine were faster and actually <laughs> better. <laughs> well, anyway, now what we're going to do, we're going to start with cheese souffle. And the souffle is just a thick sauce into which egg whites are folded. And it's the egg whites that expand as they're heated, and that makes the souffle rise. You're going to start with the bechamel. With the bechamel. And I have three tablespoons of butter here, and I put four tablespoons of flour so on the base, which we call a roux, a roux blanc. OK. And the roux goes on top of the roux that you cook a few seconds. I have a cup and a half of milk, which I'm going to add directly. How long do you think that the roux has to cook? Well, I don't cook the roux more than like 10, 15 seconds. Some people say that then the flour is still raw. No, I don't believe that. You don't believe no. that? No, I don't believe that. I do. It, 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 you do. Yes. But you know, think of a crème pâtissière. Crème mm -hmm. pâtissière, you beat egg yolk, sugar, mm -hmm. you put flour in it, mm -hmm. you put your boiling milk, put it back, bring it mm -hmm. to a boil and take it out. And it always tastes floury. It never tastes floury, <laughs> a crème pâtissière. <laughs> All right, okay. so this, this has to come to a boil. What I like to put in mind, I put a little bit of nutmeg. That's sort of a pinch, uh, isn't yes. it? Yes, and uh, a dash of salt. And the base here, as you can see on the outside here, it's starting getting thick. How soon as it comes to a boil, it's about ready. And the bechamel is the proportion here of almost three tablespoons of flour per cup of liquid, so it's pretty thick. A thick white sauce. Yes. Beautifully made. And we're going to do uh, cheese in it. Cheddar cheese. Go on. See how it gets thick now. It has to be thick so it'll... Yes, to hold the hold thing together. Everything. Actually, we're going to put the egg yolk. It's going to thicken it even further. Now we're going to okay. do the egg whites separately. Yes. So you break your egg like this, and you separate the white from the yolk, right? Yeah. And with impeccably clean fingers. That reminds me when I was an apprentice too. We had to clean up the. And then we're going to do shell. as you usually do. Oh, Joe, you can break a few of these eggs too, Jack. That's right. So yeah. here is what I do. I put them directly in there, and then I remove the yolk. I need that. All the white. yolks together. Here. No, I need the yolk in there. <laughs> so, in. Okay, we have three, of course. Now, have... supposing you have broken the yolk and there's some of the yolk in there, that's why I was doing them separately. Well, I am. Yes, you never break them. I am. I am all confident. Right. Okay. You do have to remove all of the white, you know, and there yeah. is a little white thing on each side, which is called the chalaza mm -hmm. of the eggs, which actually the sinew, oh. which all the yolk in suspension here in the center of the shell. Yes, you can see that very easily. Yeah. So that should be removed too. But now, uh, supposing there's a speck of which you're so good at, you never there break isn't them. Any, yeah. Well, you know what happened? When people okay. separate the eggs with the shell, I bet you they lose almost each time about a third of the egg white. So I'm doing about five egg white here. What I want to do is to start it very fast first. And I do that to break the egg white so that it's liquid. I think if that's I go, a very good idea. Yeah, because if you go slowly, it's like a wet mop which goes around and it does. Mm. So now I start slowly. And you can hear the egg white falling on itself. And okay. the reason is that I try not to touch the board. There's no way you could go as fast as a machine. <laughs> OK, so it's halfway done. Going very quickly. Yeah, and then you can change hand if you get tired. Well, I think we can put the egg yolk in your bechamel if you want. You have four egg yolk there. Basically, I want that type of texture, you know. And now, you see, while Julia is finishing her stuff, I stir gently in my egg because if I don't do anything, they start breaking down very fast. So you want a little bit of the white? I'll give you a little bit of this first if you All mix right, it break with it your whisk. Okay. Okay. That's good. Mixing it with the whisk, that lightened the whole mixture. And now you put it back in there. All right. Let's 
That's it. And then you're going to add oh, some Oh, I cheese, don't right? like it all at once, actually, but then I like to put a little bit some of the cheese. OK, so I start folding, and you can add cheese. That's right. Yes, it's much better doing it with two people, isn't it? Beautiful mixture. That looks lovely. See, the eggs are not grainy here, and that's the proper texture. Now, if you find, say, in a machine, if you beaten them too much and they've gone grainy, that I, I find if you put another raw egg it helps. That's in, true. It'll, That's it'll, true. You don't have to throw them all out. Now what happened, you can put that in your mold ready to go into the oven and you can keep it for 45 minutes. But you cannot beat your egg white, leave them by themselves without anything, unless you put sugar in it to stabilize them to do a meringue. So here, you're putting a collar on yours. Okay, let me put you putting a collar on yours? I never yes. put collar on my souffle, but... Well, then yours don't rise high enough. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to butter that for you? Oh, it's buttered now. We need a little... Mm -hmm. We're going to put butter. a little cheese in it. All right. But we need to butter that, too. Yeah, OK. The cheese is right <sighs> there. You want yeah. Parmesan cheese, right? I don't care. Either one. OK, this is butter, too. This is the reason for putting cheese or breadcrumb around the sides is so that it won't stick to the sides. It'll rise and you give up. a nice, crusty, yeah. give a nice, crusty side to it. OK. See, nice. that's very nice. No. OK. So we put this first or the collar first? Put this that first. first. Yeah. All right. And how do you attach this? Ah. Oh, have the head sewing. of the pin down mm. for easy removal. Well, that's going to go out. Good. Should I put a bit more on top now? I would think so. We want it to rise over the... Wow, this is a big souffle. OK, we have all of it in there. Beautiful. No, it immediately goes into the oven. This is going to take, like, 45 minutes. 350 degrees, I put, right? OK. I'm finishing my bechamel I did before. Now I put my egg yolk in it. Beautiful color. Mm -hmm. OK, so I put my egg yolk in it. It thickened a little bit. Yep. Now I'm going to do the base of the souffle with scallop, you know? We're going to do a scallop base here. And those scallop, I have a pound of scallop almost here, like three quarters mm -hmm. of a pound. I just have a little bit of butter and oil, some shallot, and they cook some shine. Quickly. So, I have beaten my uh, egg in the same way, but we did it in the machine this time. And I put a little bit of there. Here. It's always very important of lightening it up. Julie, I think that I may put that back into the big bowl there. OK. Yes, that would be easier. OK. Do you want to put the cheese for okay. me just like you did on the other? All right. This is weirdy cheese. What kind is it? This is an English cheddar. They always do things in strange ways, don't they? You think so? A little more. You like it? No. You don't like it? I like ours better. No. So you think we should... Uh... I think it'll be all right in the souffle. OK. So the mixture here. Looks nice. The color is very pretty, I think. You're going to put that right on top. And then does it get anything on top of it? Uh, on top of it, I think that I'm going to put some uh, breadcrumb. I like to put some breadcrumb on top of it. Here you are. Maybe I can even mark this. Oh, yes, that'll be nice. I mark it as yes, and we're just the side. Mm -hmm. Just like this. Very chic. Oh. OK, a little bit of breadcrumb on top. And I'll put a little piece of the cheese on top, yes. I know you love it. Well, it's pretty. And then you can, of course, you can do that with any type of cheese. Shall we put that in the oven and see how mm -hmm. the other one is doing? Look at our other one. Look at that one. That's coming up nicely. Wow, look at that one. If I'll put this one next to it, it's yes. going to cook a bit faster because it's flatter. I wonder how nearly done is that, do we think? I think it takes another 10, 15 minutes, in my opinion. 
the souffle in the oven now. And remember, you wait for the souffle. The souffle doesn't wait for you. So when it's ready, you gotta sit down and eat, eat it. it. I think we're on. Let's open it up. Okay. It's a big one. We should check right away. Wow. Yep. Look at that. Okay. Wait, we'll put it right you... there. Right here. And then one way to check is to stick a big skewer in. This one has to cook another time. And then it should come least. out fairly clean as it has, you see. Okay, now the pin's out. There we are, Jack. Beautiful, look Beautiful. at this. Look at that souffle. Let's admire it for a while. Done. You know, a little stay up a little yours bit. Yours go, go higher than mine. Well, that's because uh, we filled it very full and put a <laughs> collar on. I always start like that and In pull the it center, apart. Right. All right. Well, that looks lovely. Can't wait to taste it. See, this is perfect. The cooking here, just slightly moist in the center. Mm -hmm. Wow. And look at the center of that souffle there. Mm. And the crust, you know, is coming from the side, which is what's good. Mm. Well, it's... I think we should see if it's any good. I love, you know, I, my favorite souffle is actually cheese souffle. I love cheese. Mm. Yeah. And it's so beer. nice for lunch with a good salad. Mm. Mm, that's delicious. I think the scallops must be ready now. Let's take it out of the oven. Yes, look oh, at wow. that. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's get it this way. I'll get this out of your way. This is an easy souffle to serve, you know, when it's in a gratin dish like this. It's easy to serve because you can actually, you know, cut mm. your portion there. Mm. And uh, that funny look che that. cheese looks very nice. It looks like orange leaves, doesn't it? Yes. And then, of course, that beautiful scallop and some juice. Mm -hmm. In the bottom, you know, the scallop are there. Oh, Give I me think some that's juice. that's lovely. Madame? Monsieur? Shall we taste it? You want to taste those? Uh, you want to see the scallop the way they are cooked? Hmm. That's right. You're right, the scallop are not overcooked at all. No. That's right. Now uh, we're going to have your famous and delicious chocolate. I think, remember in the old days, there was Dionne Lucas, a uh -huh. famous English woman who was a great French cook. And I think her signature dish was the chocolate, what you call it, roulade or yes, roll? Yes, roulade de chocolat. Yeah. Yes, it was lovely. But Jack's is even better, I think. Well. It's moister uh, and lighter and better. Good. Now, I'm not, not that she wasn't a wonderful cook, oh, yeah. too. I want to show you now how to line up the jelly roll pan. So you fold that in four. And you cut the corner here, the open corner there. Well, now what do we, we do, do that? Well, we take a bit of butter and we butter half of it. Mm -hmm. About half of it this yeah. way. Then we fold the one which is not buttered on top, so that it's buttered on each side. Mm -hmm. Then we open well, it. Well, that saves you from buttering it each side. Right. Nice. Now we open it. We put it buttered side down. Well, this for, is parchment for, paper. For a second. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you lift it up. Now it's buttered on the other side. And well, we put it really here. really labor saving. Yes. And that's what happens is, you see the corner, the corner, the way those things yeah. fold. Yes, that really folds in. the corner in. there, because you cut the yeah. paper this way. So that's very it, clever. It make a nice little casing, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's important to unmold it later on. You see, you can see that. Yes, you better be able to unmold it. Yes. So we are ready now. So I am going to do the ganache. Okay. And ganache is really chocolate and uh, and cream, and in equal proportion. I have a cup of cream here, and with that cup of cream, we have eight ounces of chocolate. This is a bittersweet chocolate. There is sugar in it, mm -hmm. but it's very very good quality. And I have six egg white that I'm going to start here. And I put a tablespoon and a half of sugar directly at the beginning. At the beginning? Now, that's unusual. Yeah, that would stabilize the egg white oh. and the whole better. So this is going to get very smooth. It does beautiful chocolate truffle with this. Mm -hmm. 
See, that's it. It's basically all ready. It's about done. And it's... You don't want to let it boil. No, you don't want to let it boil. The cream was hot. When the cream is hot, it makes mm -hmm. very fast. But you have to be very careful if, that you're a pro and you know how to do it. But us home people, we, stop it. we no, don't you... know all the difficulties. If, if you really... know sometimes more than I do. <laughs> but if you let it boil, it can all thicken up. So if you want to be absolutely safe, you can put it yeah. over water, then you'll right. be absolutely safe. So that's beautiful. Right. That's just as that's smooth it, as yeah. anyone could want. OK, my egg white looks beautiful. And you do use the machine now, isn't it? Oh, yes, I do, of course. I'm going to put this directly in there. And the egg whites, it doesn't hurt them at all to have hot chocolate to win. Well, I mix them a little bit with the whisk and finish it with the rubber spatula. I must say, it smells. And that smell good? Now, if this were cream, that would deflate the cream. Oh, it yes. It doesn't hurt the chocolate Anything at hot, all. Yes. Well, that's a, a ganache with egg white, so that is really a souffle, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I could put that in the, in the oven and do a beautiful chocolate souffle. You know, I like the chocolate souffle, individual souffle, so that would be good. Mm -hmm. You could probably do about a 10, 10 individual souffle with mm -hmm. that, you know? Now, what an easy way to make a souffle. Yes, it is. And wait till you taste it. It has a moistness to it, which is just lovely. I think you like that recipe, Julia. I do. And we flatten it out a little bit here. And you know, this at 350 degrees will cook about uh, 12 minutes, you know, in those mm -hmm. areas. It cooks pretty fast. You could do a souffle or you could do a cake like a souffle and let it cool off mm -hmm. and then mold it like a flourless chocolate cake or then you can do your roulade. There's nothing worse than a, as a title than a flourless chocolate cookie. Who cares whether it has flour in it or not? But it's important. It's it good. So that's, that's OK. That's 12 minutes, 350 degrees. Fine. Now what? Now you're going to beat the cream for oh, me, I'm right? going to beat the cream. OK. Good. I always beat the cream over ice. I've got ice in here. Because it has got to be cold. We need one cup of cream. Then I don't ever use the machine for cream. Because uh -huh. I don't, so you want to beat as much air in as possible. I it put... really takes about, it takes a good five minutes. I put the sugar now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tablespoon and a half of sugar. And a little bit of cognac. Mm hmm. Well, that was like a tiny bit of vanilla in two, is that okay? Okay, a tablespoon yeah. of cognac and then maybe. About a teaspoon of vanilla? Teaspoon half of a teaspoon. Good. Looks good already. I'll let you beat a little bit too. It's good for the arm. It is true. Can I take it out? As long as it really is chilled. Yeah. I think the beauty of it, the important part, is that the cream is beaten with a back and forth motion much more than getting into it like the egg white. But you want to get as much air in as possible, yeah. don't you? And usually it may break down and turn into butter, you know, if you build in it too much. But just the emulsion back and forth, you can see it being taken mm -hmm. now. And this is going to be beaten into a sharp tea. Yeah, and that's it. In other words, it isn't stiffly beaten white cream, it's softly beaten white like cream. Like this? You think that's just about enough? Yeah. But I think having it cold is very important. It helps a lot, yes. And that you can... Beat ahead of time, you can just keep it in a bowl of ice. And I think yes. you have a, a ready yes. one. So we won't have to wait. One. He has a ready one. Which is ready there. Take it out there. And this has to be cool. What I like to do is to put a little bit of cocoa powder here, unsweetened cocoa powder. Now, if you did this ahead, could you do it overnight? If I do it overnight, or if it's summer, if it's very humid too, I may want to put a little bit of gelatin in the cream. Uh-huh. You know? I mean, melt it in. Yes, to hold it. So let's see here. Just a little layer of this. Mm -hmm. Cream. OK. So let's see. This uh, is typical of chefs. They never clean up. No, no, the I water. always clean. I'm going to serve that next oh, to the oh, you next are. to the, the. No, I always clean everything. I'm a, a real. I always feel that they have a lot of 
Minions、All、outside. Right, I'll put that in, in addition, I haven't been in the kitchen, in the professional kitchen, a long time. You know, I work at home, and if I don't clean、mm-hmm. anything, my wife yells at me. So, I'm very careful. Okay, so we use the paper, you know, to. Roll it basically this way, and you know, at that point, I could put that other piece of paper underneath and keep it like that in my refrigerator ready. So here we have to transfer this to that. And it doesn't make any difference if it cracks; it's going to cover it with We're gonna powdered put a sugar or something of, uh, anyway. Of cocoa powder on top, yeah. yeah. So now, really, what we put on top of it here is again a little bit of unsweetened cocoa powder. I can leave some of that on my、mm-hmm. tray, you know, makes a bit of a decoration. This is very easy to cut. You don't put powder on that. On the top. Oh, we could if you want. Or you could frost it if you wanted to. This is for the chef, you know, in the kitchen.、Yeah. You cut the end of it.、Mm-hmm. Especially if you do your bûche de Noël, so it has、yeah. a nice shape. Okay, I'm going to give you a nice slice out of it. Well, I'm ready.、Maybe. You know, it's still a little warm from the oven.、Mm. And we could put, oh, maybe a little decoration, a little bit of a flowers. Yes.、Sir. Maybe a little spring of mint. Well, no, I'll see if it's any good.、Mm. Me too. You need a nice sweet wine with that. Quite light, huh? It's lovely. So I've had a lot of the milk that are kind of dry, and this has a, a lovely moist quality to it. I did it with your help. You whip the cream. This is really just so good. I can't stop eating it. I'll just say, bon appetit. And happy cooking. Presentation of KQED, San Francisco. Jacques and I are both vegetarians, but we eat meat too. Well, we eat everything. Yes, including vegetable and a lot of vegetable. But you have to treat your vegetable well, respect them. You have to season them properly. And know how to cook them. Right. We have a great group of them for you today. We're going to start out with a stuffed whole head of cabbage. This is a recipe that you find in practically every culture, I think. Particularly in Middle Europe. Yes, and here we have a Savoy cabbage and your regular cabbage. You can actually use either one, right? No, but the Savoy is prettier. The、I'll、Savoy is our way. And one way that Julia does it, I had never done it before. Well, I read about it.、It's、you read about it. Not my invention. Oh, okay. And it works. What you do, you take the core of that cabbage, as I'm doing now. And conventionally, what you have to do is to remove all of those leaves and to blanch them. 
and you blanch them, of course, in uh, salted boiling water. But what we did here, what did we do? What we did here, we put it in the freezer, and this is frozen solid, isn't it? Yes. Hot frozen solid, and as you can see, at that point, the leaves are still very frozen, kind of separate like this, so they are kind of blanched. So that saves you one whole step, because it was an awful nuisance boiling them and putting the leaves off yes. as you did it. Those separate, but it gets very hard as you get toward the center. So we have another one here which has been defrosting. While you take off the leaves, I'll start making the stuffing. The stuffing is going to have chopped vegetables and a bit of meat and some rice. And this all have to be sautéed first. So I'm using some vegetable oil, I'm heating that up. Then we're going to have onion. See those here now. You can undo all those leaves after it's been defrosted. That really is wonderful yeah, it how goes, well it, it works, goes terrific. isn't it? What I'm going to do also is to take the center of that cabbage and I'll give you yes, up I to can... about here because that part here you can't really, the leaves are too small and that we're going to use in the stuffing. So I'm keeping all of that stuff here. That's good. And I'll give you that. That's the center. Yeah, that's the center for your stuffing. Sorry, there. And then we're going to stuff all of those leaves. Well, we're going to form it so that it looks as though we're a whole cabbage. So you'll think, oh, there's that cabbage. That doesn't look very nice. And so you start cutting it up, and you find all of this stuffing in it. And this is one of these recipes where you can really do what you want. You don't have to do what we do. You can have mushrooms Absolutely. or who knows what. And then when the cabbage is stuffed, we're going to kind of braise it. So on this side, I'm going to start a braising liquid. And for that, I will have also a little bit of celery. And that's about three or four cloves of garlic. Okay. And once cooked, it loses its violence. I'll put in a bit of... You don't like violent garlic. A little caraway seeds there. Yeah, That's about it. half a teaspoon, I would say. It is good, yes. OK. Is that for me or for you? No, that's for me. Well, I'm that's going for to you when you braise the cabbage. But this all has to be nice and soft so it will give out its flavors. Well, I have some stuff here if you want. So I'm putting the carrot, celery. I will also put a little bit of oil in mine. I haven't put any salt and pepper in mine. Salt and pepper, I'll yeah. I'll put in some white pepper. The onion. Now, there is two parts to that recipe which look the same but are different. The first part that Julia is doing there is ready to go inside the leaf, mixed with the meat and the rice. And that second part is for the whole cabbage to be braised or cooked back on top of this. So this is a flavoring base if you want. We're not doing a vegetarian stuffed cabbage, but we could perfectly well. You don't need you could. meat in it at all. No. What you put in instead? Mushrooms, I think. We could, we could stuff it with mushroom, rice, with bulgur, with uh, any type yes. of uh, mm -hmm. leftover pasta would be very good. And oh, inside well. we're going to put some tomato. Those tomatoes have been dipped in boiling water so that the skin come out very easily. If you want to blanch them, if you don't want to blanch them, it's fine. Cut them in half and mm -hmm. press out the seed. I How need many? about three cups of this. You always do this, practically always when you're adding tomato, is to get that extra juice out of which you can take peak for something else, but you don't want your stuffing all watery with tomato juices. Or even if you don't have it, a can of stewed tomato would be perfectly yes, that fine. Be perfectly all right. And for me, I have about three cups of tomato here. This is your sauce, still. This is the base, yes. <laughs> the sauce, a bit of salt, pepper in it. I'm going to cover this, and just like yours, mine is going to have to cook for a few minutes. Now, this is just about ready. It's thoroughly cooked, and the liquid is mostly evaporated. All right, into the bowl. If you had more time, of course, you could let that cool off a little bit. But in our case here, we're going to put the rice in it. We got about we one and a half, two cups we had, Yes, we had one cup of raw rice, which gives you a, about two cups of cooked rice. 
must yes. have to be done with your impeccably clean fingers. Do you think we should sauté a little bit and taste it to make and sure? taste it? Well, we could do that too. You want to be sure that it's wonderfully, wonderfully seasoned. When you get it mixed up, give me a I give a you a little bit. bit of this. You ready well, for it? Mm-hmm. What we are going to do now is to reform a whole cabbage. And to this, I think one of the easiest ways is actually to do it on a piece of aluminum foil. We'll start by kind of reforming the top of our cabbage. Now well, here you are, Jack. Want to test it? I think that's good. I think it can take a dash more salt, so what we can do, we can season as we go along here. Doesn't need much, I don't think. No? Okay. You'd but never know there was that much garlic in it. This. So what we do, we put a first layer of meat, rice, stuffing here. You want to give me a hand? And we try to put... It the, looks so the, limp and funny. Yeah, the, the outside of the rib. Going back in that shape, right? I need to put at least another layer here. You got a lot of stuffing there. I have a lot of stuffing. We're going to do a big cabbage. Here we are. You can oh. do this alone, but it's better with two people, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Always better to cook with your family and friends. Here we have, I have a third layer here. That's it. Here, we, we're using everything. Okay. I mean, actually, we could reform it like this in the shape of the cabbage, and this is good mm -hmm. with this. And I think another good idea, too, is actually not to have that much aluminum foil so the juice of the cabbage 